you as well let's see who's in the live chat oh wow people there's a lot of people in the live chat already this is great all right cool hi people let us know how the audio is we're going to get started on reporting the news on atheism religion secularism and maybe some politics um i see e sherpa mirror already in the live chat there casey is there mars is there another godless atheist we oh okay so don i see you on facebook um mike is there hi hi mike it was right will philly is there by the way the reason why we started diff um, at a different time today is because I'm still in London. This is my last day in London. I'm going to Germany next for some um, speeches in uh, Dusseldorf, Berlin, and also one in Amsterdam. So, um, okay, cool. But, but let's get into... Hey, Shripam, how are you? I'm good, Armin. How are you? Good, good, good. All right. So let's, let's uh, stop with... Uh, announcements and just to get right into the first news let me actually bring up the summaries so first news oklahoma youth pastor charged with raping underage girls right okay this is right according to the oklahoma state bureau of investigation 34 year old justin white a former public school teacher and youth pastor at uh spiro 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 baptist church in some county that i can't pronounce was arrested and charged with rape and lewd molestation uh white was uh, the baseball coach at smithville public school is that how you say it during the tw 2013 and 2014 school year he allegedly has sexual in intercourse with a female student several times at his re residence located on school property according to the, okay he has been arrested okay this is one thing i just a lot of people hear the news like this and they might say like okay what else is new right um this guy is a former this is a youth pastor right so we're like oh yeah pastors priests they met as children of course but i think be, uh, be careful guys because you we have to be uh, not do what a lot of religious people do to us like over generalize like we have to be careful because we're gonna see more more and more news like this so this pastor raped a, a, this child that priest did this, this child and it, it's gonna be especially as atheist activists very tempting to say like yeah oh you're a priest you must be a child molester oh you're a pastor oh you must be a child molester like i've seen a lot of atheists do that especially like i see that people do that in the comment section on atheist republic as well right oh he's a priest take your children i mean we're against religion we're we we're religious against religious teaching as well but this is not true there's many pastors and many priests that are not child molesters and you know stories like this i don't understand in i mean and also be careful it is true that priests and pastors do, um, and other religious leaders like imams seem uh, seem to be doing more child molestation or sexual assault than compared to you know not religious leaders but you shouldn't a lot of people judge this based on what they hear in the news and that's not a very good way of measuring you have to come to that uh, and i mean that that is true okay but the reason why we know it's true is because we actually have looked at the numbers but i think most people are convinced that is true because of the coverage that this gets in the news right and you have to understand that that's not a very good way maybe if you haven't had checked the numbers you should have thought that maybe maybe um yeah the pastors and priests molesting children but it's at the same percentage as non-pastors and non-imams and non-priests but the only reason why but, but the the reason why it gets more news attention is because it's more interesting and more shocking for a pastor or a priest for a mom i mean it shouldn't be shocking but maybe that's why it's, you have to be skeptical maybe that's why it gets more news coverage but then when you actually go look at the numbers like yeah okay it is it is higher again but you still shouldn't generalize you shouldn't say like all priests all pastors right and if it is more religious leaders why is it right because 
uh, Christianity and Islam and these religions are bad, but there's not there's no commandment in any of these religions telling them to go ch molest children, right? So why is it why is it that this is happening, right? And there is a lot of theories on this. Some theories suggest it's because well, it, it, it's a perfect environment for um, to do this, right? You have a position of authority, you have you know trust of parents because you're religious to give your children, uh, you know. So it's I don't know what the answer is, but also you know when it comes to Christian, to Catholics. And they say celibacy causes a lot of mental and uh, what do you think, Shubham? What do you think what the reason is? Well, uh, just what you said, like they have the authority and they have like the chances, like the parents entrust their kids to them. And so, I mean, many of them, I, I think like there would be some people who even join the church just to get this kind of authority or something. It right. could be. Means we don't have the data, but it it is very possible. Right. So that they know that uh, they will get the authority if they join the church and all. So they do, and after that they commit this atrocities. Yeah. So you're saying it might be the other way around. It might not be that you are you're you're more likely to more likely to be a child minister because you're a priest or a pastor or whatever. It's that you were already in. In, you know, interested in that, and you became a pastor, a priest, or an imam to be able to uh, have access to an environment where you could do what you want. Is that what you're saying? Maybe the other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it could. It is very possible. Okay, okay. Um, anything in the live chat? Let me see. Um, B just saying it gets worse when they are welcome back as forgiven. Oof, yeah. Yeah, that's so disgusting. And and actually, that it might be another reason why peop, uh, religion allows this kind of behavior because the whole forgiveness for you know, people see forgiveness for oh forgive you know they see that as something beautiful, right? Um, a forgiveness does have its place, but the way religion forgives, you know, is is just as long as you just do um, ask God for forgiveness, you're fine, right? No matter how horrific the crime is, which is, you know, gives you a license to sin. So unlike what people say with religion gives you morality, I always say, no, religion actually gives you the license to sin because you could do whatever you want. And then if you get forgiveness, then you're good. If you didn't have religion, you still had to deal with the guilt, with the, um, you know, the community being against you and, you know, your shame. But in Christianity, especially the entire community forgives you as long as you ask Jesus for forgiveness, whatever you have done. So the whole natural process of feeling shame and guilt and all it all goes away. So instead of instead of actually encouraging more morality, no, it just gives you an excuse to be able to do whatever sin you want to do and get away with it, like at least mentally. So that's another theory on why uh, these behaviors might be encouraged under religion. Uh, yeah, also, uh, the church is actually making it worse in a way by, like, they were probably receiving criticisms and uh, blame uh, in their Facebook pages and comments after this incident, and they didn't decide to answer all this stuff. Instead, what they did is, like, they took down their Facebook page. What, really? Yeah. Wait, the, 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 for this... For the school, for the for the youth pastors' church or whatever, what is yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Instead of making a public statement, they took down their entire Facebook page. Right. Like maybe they're overwhelmed. Um. Yeah, they should have made an announcement or something. Anyways. Um. I mean, one other thing I want to just add is that a lot of atheists. Um. Again, I'm more. I'm trying to be critical of our own community because this is how your community. Uh, improves like we try to like unlike what these people did which they took it out of a facebook page we do we like to highlight the problems that we see in our community in in, in the atheist republic community right a lot of people um well not a lot but some people i've noticed in the atheist community celebrate something like this they're like because it's, sh it's shaming christianity right it's like another another way to see like oh look how Chris how bad like this is your religion. It doesn't teach you morality. 
but please if 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 you see a, a child rape story and the first thought your mind is like oh haha look at religion instead of holy shit this child is there was another child getting raped that's so sad then if you have to be like okay what's wrong with my head right why am i looking at a child being raped in, in the story why am i looking at that at like uh, the, you know instead of sympathy and sadness for the child the first thing that comes to my mind like is wow you, you, you look at you know this is good this is embarrassing for christianity right um and then Christi christianity makes itself look very stupid i mean yeah. they don't need this kind of news to make christianity look stupid i mean it's already stupid enough i mean uh, they they must be crazy like celebrating a rape of a child that's that's both <laughs> I mean, Crazy. they don't think they're, like, I'm not saying they're openly, like, celebrating it, but just, like, yeah, I mean, analyze I your, yeah, 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 but they might not, like, if you just try to be mindful of your thoughts and see what, like, is the sadness and sympathy the, the first thing that comes to your mind or not? Like, if not, then maybe try to self-reflect a little bit more, all right? Uh, but one last note on this, um, you know how much, how many times I say child molestation rape? None these videos like this is why our videos on YouTube co get completely deprioritized. That's why our channel is not growing. So please share our videos, and this is why we can never monetize any of these videos. So please, if you want to uh, become a patron or support us in any other way, the link is in the description. Anyways, let's go to the next news. A uh, pastor running for Colorado State House says it's wrong for women to wear pants. Oh, for fuck's sakes, what the hell? I I should stop swearing because I know YouTube really hates people swearing. And they completely deprioritize your videos when you stop swearing. But, you know, this, if this, this story warrants swearing. Uh, Corey Solin? 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 I don't know. A pastor of... Hopewell Baptist Church in somewhere long, yeah, I'm not gonna, at, at, at a graduate of ultra conservative somewhere college in, in Indiana. Oh my God, there's so many, just say Indiana. Nobody needs to know the name of the town or whatever um, in the summer. Okay, because Anna, let, Shubham, let Anna know the summary. Like, we do, I don't need to go through so many names. Just include the general, like the state or something, okay? Because if people need more detail, there's o that's always going to be in the description. The link to the source is always there. Uh, in the end, and also running for a seat in Colorado State House in District 63 said that women should not wear pants. Benjamin Suleen, Suleen, uh, Corey, son, Corey Son, okay, so now this is a comment by the son of this idiot pastor that is saying women should not wear pants he is saying that while the church doesn't enforce a dress code uh, pastor Celine has made it known that he believes that the bible says it's immodest for women to wear pants where i missed that actually 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 it does i was checking for it and Dorothy, uh, I think uh, Deuteronomy, and uh, there it says like uh, women should not wear clothes meant for men, and men should not wear clothes meant for women. Okay, but they didn't and that's, have that's an abomination. But they didn't have that. pants back then, so maybe I could argue that it's just talking about dress code back then. I don't know. But wait, who decided that pants are just for men? It's a men's clothing. Who decided that? I don't know. This is such a stupid thing to be worried about. I, I mean, and, I, I mean, he's he's just against like uh, the pants, like normal pants. I mean, right. he's saying that women should wear culottes actually, because they look like skirts, not actually, pants. Let me let me let me let me actually be a little bit. Here's a conspiracy theory, which I think is not that far fetched, but because I've seen other, other people, other people like this knowingly say stuff that is going to catch headlines because this guy is running for what running for a seat in the state house right district 63 right 
So I imagine if you think you're not getting, if you say controversy, is this a um, religious state, right? Yes. Okay. So you could, you know, this might get, get headline news or, or, you know, the friendly atheist is covering it. It might get in the newspaper and we might be like, wow, what the fuck? This guy thinks like he's against Christianity for a woman to wear pants. But it might, it might be, uh, he might be saying something absurd on purpose because he might, because by covering his story, then he might get on the radar of some more conservative people that, that will go and vote for him. You know what I mean? So it might be like, it's not, it might be that these people are not that as out of touch as we think they are, but they are using our, you know, outrage or our ridicule of what, of things that they on purpose said to get on the news, they're using that to just maybe get that, to, you know, and once it gets covered in the news, then it just takes a few very Christian uh, families to notice this guy because, you know, who, how many people go and vote for, I don't know, um, the state seats for, I don't know, district, what, district 64, 63, like, nobody, not that many people show up. So, I mean, if you could just convince a few people, if you get if you get on the news and just a few conservative Christian um, old people decided to show up a vote for you, you might just win the seat, right? So it might be like these things might be by design. Like it might be, uh, it's it's easy for us to look at religious people and point and laugh, but uh, but I've noticed a lot of times things that seems ridiculous. It has po it's been actually politically very strategic. I'm not saying this one is, I don't know, but I'm just saying, you know, a lot of the things that Islamic um, sc um, sc scholars or mullahs or imams do, we post them and they seem so ridiculous and we laugh like, wow, religion is so ridiculous. But then once you dig in a little bit deeper, you see like, yeah, it was ridiculous, you know, from a logical perspective, but Politically, it made a lot of sense what they, wh why they did what they did. So just think about that before you like always look at these. Because religious leaders are very strategic, okay? And this is why even though atheists are losing, winning the demographic battle as we're growing, we're still losing the political battle because we don't. We ref a lot of us refuse to take make you know political become politically active. And this is why religion is dominating in many places, the political sphere. What do you think, Shippa? Oh, I agree with you. I mean, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, but there are people who will support him for his ridiculous statements. Right. That's very politically uh, correct move. I mean, yeah. even if it's ridiculous. Yeah, but not only they, they will vote for him, he's using the people that are find it ridiculous to boost like to signal to other to to take his message and broadcast it and send a signal to the christian conservatives that might come out and vote for him like so he might be relying on us to ridicule him yeah. and point out his story uh, greg is saying a pastor who uses the book of fables to enrich his life thinks his words have meaning uh, let me see if anybody be just saying, I wonder how he feels about uh, when men wore thighs. And yeah, like a lot of old paintings of like, I don't know, French kings and um, British uh, kings. You can see that they're wearing, you know, tights and, you know, leggings. And it's just so, yeah, I don't know who decides what's, what's men's clothing and women's clothing. It's such a stupid thing for the fact okay even if this guy is being strategic the fact that some people listen to the story are like yes he's bringing some serious issues so i'm gonna go vote for him that's just that makes me very sad that people think like that anyways should we go to the next news yeah yes okay all right next news muslim discovers pret pret sandwich is that how you said he's he's been eating for 12 years isn't halal oh no what a tragedy uh so who's this this is where is this this is in the uk 
Yes, London. Yeah, uh, this is in London. Yeah. Uh, Khalid Qadir has been eating his lunch at Pret uh, for the p- uh, past 12 years and his go-to sandwich is tuna mayo baguette. He never imagined it was made with anything more than tuna mayonnaise and some slices of cucumber until he noticed a new ingredient labeled on the sandwich wrapper a few weeks ago. Uh, the the tax advisor, why? Dis- oh, so Khalid is the tax advisor. Why would that be included? So he discovered white wine vinegar was a listed ingredient which he believes is not halal and goes against his religious beliefs. He complained to the manager <laughs> of his local store and the matter was eventually escalated to Pret CEO. Wow. Okay, that's the serious. Wait, this don't all so what was in the sandwich? Uh, tuna. Yeah, slices of cucumber. Don't don't all f- uh, fruit and you know cucumber and some other veggies come up with come with a little uh, some percentage of alcohol naturally in them. Just a very small percentage, isn't that just with everything? Yeah, many many fruits have alcohol, slight percentages of alcohol. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's really low, but they do have some. Well, this guy first of all doesn't know his Islam right because they can't. Once this was discovered, the uh, mullahs and imams and whatever the religious leaders they came like, okay, well, well, that small percentage is okay, doesn't matter, that's halal. So this guy is getting angry over nothing, right? Um, but second of all. The, the escalated the CEO, how, how likely it is that if somebody else had complained to this and this was not an Islamic thing, it would have gotten this high, right? Like if somebody was making a stupid complaint about the ingredients, I mean, I think the reason why it wasn't included before is probably because it's such a small percentage that it comes with just every fruit, right? You can't, you know, uh, but... I bet you, like, people would just laugh and dismiss this if this guy was not a Muslim guy and, you know, in the UK and we and we'll complain, oh, this goes against my religion, right? It's it's only the fear of, like, oh, if we ignore this guy, we're going to be Islamophobes, aren't we? This is why it goes all the like, such a stupid complaint makes it all the way up to the CEO. This is religious privilege, right? You just could complain about anything and people are like, yeah, whatever, are like, well, I'm a Muslim and this is offensive and goes against my religion. Well, hold on then. Let me get the CEO of the company on the phone with you. <laughs> All right. So like, please, please don't accuse us of Islamophobia. This is going to destroy our reputation. Please. What do you want? Just tell us. Tell us how to appease you. Um... What the talk? What do you think, Shubha? Yeah. Uh, the the company actually said that uh, people with picky eating habits should have checked their website. They always urge their customers to check the website because every ingredient is listed there. Right. And even that alcohol content was supposed to be less than uh, that in orange juice. Less than orange. Is- Oh, wow. That in orange juice. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's absolutely stupid, and this uh, Khalid is saying like uh, doesn't matter if it's one percent or zero point one percent. It it is like allergy to him, and he has no tolerance for alcohol. Uh, what I think is like okay, he went twelve years without noticing his allergies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's saying like, oh, yeah, no, actually, so your point is very good because he, he's saying like, listen, for us Muslim, alcohol is like, you have to treat it like somebody who has allergy to peanuts. And the way you treat peanuts with somebody who has allergy to peanuts, you have to treat alcohol like that to Muslim, right? But the fact, the fact that he went eating this for 12 years and had no problem is there exactly the reason why we don't treat it like allergy, right? Um, but another thing is that this guy so should stay away from fruits in general and vegetables, right? Based on because they all come with a small percentage of alcohol, so just stop touching. Um, I don't know, this guy is stupid. Steph is saying, Oh my god, if your personal dietary requirements are so specific, pack a lunch 
Catherine saying, if you have any dietary re restriction, it is 100% your responsibility to find out what's in your own meal. Some people want hand holding through life uh, as their mommy and daddy did it all through childhood. Well, this one is not mommy and daddy. This one is just sky daddy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is just people using. I think, especially in the UK, right? In the UK, you could just claim religious privileges all the time. Um, so, and it works. Unfortunately, in the UK, it works. Um, let me see if we have anything in the live chat. Top top halal. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Let's go to the next news. Next news is what? Let me actually remove all these numbers here. Next news is from Norway. Norway mosque. Oh shit! Norway mosque shooting suspect appears in court with two black eyes after being taken out by 65-year-old Muslim worshiper. Wow! So he was taken out before he could cause any damage. Yeah, before he could kill anyone, like uh, they strangled him, and when the police got there, he was like in a chokehold by the Muslim worshippers. Wow, this is amazing. Good job, these Muslim worshippers. The suspected gunman, accused of an attempted terrorist attack at the mosque in Norway, has appeared in court with two black eyes. Philip Manshus, Manshus, 21, is also alleged to have killed his teenage stepsister before targeting also oh, somebody did die his teenage stepsister before targeting the al nur islamic center in uh, oslo sub suburb Beirum. Beirum? I don't know. his facial uh, bruising is said to have been sustained in the desperate f fight inside the mosque in which 65 year old worshiper Muhammad Rafiq managed to disarm. Wow, this guy is amazing. Disarm the assailant as he began to fire his weapon. Police said Mr. Man Manchus, Manchus had hoped to kill, with a uh, report suggesting he had entered the building with at least two rifles and wearing body armor. Okay, so the Mus so this guy, this 21 year old guy, just comes with two rifles in a gun uh, in, a, in a mosque starts shooting and this 65 year old m m muslim muhammad he ch he decides to go at him this is pretty brave right like yeah I i'm not yeah some so some sources say that there were actually three people inside the mosque and all three of them worked to together and there are also some sources saying like those were not rifles they were shotguns i mean but it actually, actually it, uh, it, uh, it is important because, I mean, if rifles, assault rifles, they are automatic. I mean, he can just fire them and people can die and shotguns just uh, need a bit of time to handle right. this way. I mean, if somebody comes at you with a gun and you have no, no weapons and you manage to disarm them, that's pretty badass. That's uh, yeah, that's badass. <laughs> and this that's guy... pretty, like... James Bond something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this guy, yeah, and this guy but probably saved some lives by doing by being this badass. Good job, this Muslim worshiper. Good job. Or let's just call him what is his name? The Muslim the guy, Muslim worshiper. Um his name is Muhammad Rafiq. Yeah. You're a hero, Muhammad Rafiq. Good job. Good job well done. Let's see what the top comment is. Uh, but anyway, why is this thing this is where this was in Norway right this is this yeah. could have been a disaster this is incre this is gonna keep increasing like right? like it's sad that for this it's sad that like we this could be celebrated as something that was stopped even though he did kill his stepsister so that's sad but it does seem to be happening like the distance between these is sh shortening right yeah okay. yeah yeah from what i uh, researched uh, he's like he's inspired from the new zealand shooting last year yeah this is gonna and he he called himself a disciple of saint uh, uh, Cretan or something like that i mean he's calling the new zealand shooter a saint and he's calling himself the third disciple of him right okay you were frozen yeah. as well but you're back now 
that's just my computer. Uh, right. Okay, that's just my computer. Okay, okay, okay now, yeah. Ooh, ooh, you're freezing. Uh, anyway. You're lagging. I'm lagging. Yeah, you're freezing as well. No, I'm not yeah. lagging, you're lagging. You're lagging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll get you back very shortly. Okay, but but another thing is that this is the amount. Imagine the amount of stress this is gonna cause. I went to a, a mosque in Vancouver, right? Because it was Open Mosque Day, right? Uh, in Vancouver, so they were inviting non-Muslims to come to a mosque and um, learn about Islam. And I was like, yeah, great, this is. Uh, I want to go there, and I. I went to a mosque and they recognized me there because as an anti-Islam critic, critic, right? Because they, some of the people there have seen my videos. And what happened was that some guy came to me, this elder man from, from that worked at the mosque, he came to me and he took me to a corner and he said, like, listen, um, the, the people that come here to this mosque, um, they're good people. Please don't come here and shoot them. And I was like, holy, what? Like, first, I felt angry and sad for him at the same time. Because first of all, I felt sad for him because I felt like, my God, these people are so stressed out if they think like every time they're coming to worship here, there could be sh somebody could shoot them. Like, imagine the level of stress that you have to go through. I also felt a little bit angry because, you know, I thought, like, I didn't tell him that, but I thought, like, imagine if I told him, like, a Muslim like hey I know you're a Muslim but please don't kill us please don't do a terrorist attack here we're good people like just saying like oh because you're a Muslim I think that you might kill us or something right so I think like I should have told him like listen if I don't assume that you're gonna shoot me because you're a Muslim is it fair for you to assume that I'm gonna that like this you know I'm a risk become an anti-Islam critic like but again, again, this they they this is a new thing for them. This is a growing. Th so I didn't say anything. I just I w I just tried to tell them like no, man, don't worry, of I'm not gonna come shoot. But that's so sad that this is becoming a major and like imagine imagine having to live with that fear. Uh, anyways, oh wait, there's a top comment actually. Uh, Trevor saying another life wasted. His and the people that he affected, he should be hung and forgotten no no he shouldn't be hung capital punishment doesn't work and the justice system is meant to prevent crime not to satisfy people's desire for revenge so we go with what works better and capital punishment doesn't work what do you think Shopa? yeah i think uh, that's right and uh, his his punishment is like uh four weeks in prison and after that i think he will be sent for therapy and all Wait, uh, really? Only four weeks in prison? Yeah, yeah. That that's what I'm surprised about. Just, I mean, this was this was really attempt of terror, and Wait, didn't four he, weeks doesn't. Didn't really... he kill somebody? He killed his step. Uh, yeah, he killed his he killed his step sister for being of Chinese origin. Holy shit! He killed his step sister because okay, yeah, that was she, a... because it was a racist extremist. Okay, uh, so, his stepmother so, adopted his stepsister uh, when she was a child, and she's of Chinese origin, and that's why he killed his stepsister. Oh my god, that poor girl! But and 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 is so his he wasn't even raised in racist environment. But if his mother adopted it, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, that's uh, something else. Like uh, the media and news reporters and were all went to his neighborhood and they were asking people about him. Some said that. Uh, last, uh, I mean, a few years ago, like someone in his family died or something like that, and after that, he has been like really different. And right. since a year ago, he has been very much into religion and uh, racism and everything. Okay. He has supported uh, uh, Nazis. He has supported uh, shootings, uh, like the New Zealand shooting and everything. Okay, wait, if you had all this detail, why were you telling, give me the, the, these details if you know them, right? So the next news, make sure you add them, because that's very important to, uh, this. but, 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 but here's the thing, if it's only four weeks and it, now they're going, maybe they, re, maybe it's because he's mentally 
you know unstable or something like we might yeah, look it at could him. be that's why that's why he needs rehabilitation and therapy but still four weeks in prison is i don't think it's i mean if he's com- i don't know i mean if he's completely if there's com- something completely wrong with him maybe he doesn't deserve any prison yeah he, he he could be mentally ill because uh, first of all when the court called him he said that he's not guilty I mean, that's not something a sane person would say. Everyone knows he killed his sister and he attempted terror, but he's saying that he's not guilty. Okay, so, and and we don't know, okay, but if he is meant, uh, meant, there's something mentally, I don't know what the right word is, but something mentally wrong with him, then it also sh- suggests that next, like, be careful not to, like, like for example, Trevor here in the, in the top comment saying, oh, just hang him. Like, well, now, now you have to be ashamed because, look, this guy... This guy doesn't deserve any punishment because he's just meant there's something wrong with him. He's he's fucked up in the head or something, right? I don't know. But again, be you know he's be, and also it's very interesting when people are like, oh, he did this, like just throw him in the fire, hang him, oh, just a bullet in the head or something. It's very biblical, right? Eye for an eye, like the very biblical way of doing justice, which is quite ironic coming from atheists. Um. But anyways, let's go to the next. Oh wait, do we have anything in the live chat? Um, nope, that's good. So let me close this. Okay, next news: Muslim woman sterilized in China. Wow, detention camp. In China's detention camps, they sterilized the woman. What? Let me. What? the fuck is happening in China? What are you doing in China? What the hell? All right. Um, wait, this, I'm getting some lag. Hold on. Eager Muslim women are being ster- uh, sterilized as in, a, at internment camps for ethnic and religious minorities in China. Um, according to former detainees, they injected us from time to my, time uh, claimed Gulbar, Gulbhar Jailova, I can't pronounce your name, sorry, who was held for more than, uh, for more than a year in government re-education centers, um, in, in the far west Xinjiang region. We had to stick our arms out through a small opening in the door, the 50-year-old told France 24, we soon realized that after our injections that we didn't get our periods anymore. So has this been verified, Chipam? Yeah, various sources are saying yes, this is verified. And uh, they have like said that there are concentration camps for Muslims and other uh, ethnicities in China. But China is saying like those are just uh, boarding schools. Yes, I don't trust anything China says. But like, okay, so why, why is the, why is the entire world letting China get away with this? This is insane. This is insane. You know, the the the, the way this is, there have one million Muslim in, in in camps, right? This is the one of the worst worst. Uh, I mean, this is getting close to um, Nazi Germany's level of oppression, right? And not only the not only the world seems to be not reacting to it as much as they would if this was happening somewhere else, but also Muslims, on you know on average, are not responding to this with that much anger. In fact, China and uh, in fact Saudi Arabia and Pakistan sent of letters, official letters, saying that they approve of what China is doing. Which and also like in which which suggests to me like you know if this was done by Israel like what China is doing to Muslims right now is way beyond what Israel or like United States or white supremacists ha- are doing to Muslims and and people don't seem to give a shit. So yeah, they- I th- I think that uh, China is getting away with this because well, first of all, China is a powerful nation yeah. and. Second is, uh, like, I think it is because of their permanent membership on the Security Council. I don't know, but that could be a reason. No, but, but I mean, if this was, I mean, if this was Iran or what, oh, 
I don't know. Maybe Saudi Arabia is on security council too. But when they if, when they uh, do something like this, it gets a lot of attention. Though I don't know. Or, no, China, China is one of the five permanent members, right? Oh, permanent so, members. Yeah. Okay. No, so I, they can I, veto any stuff they want. No, but I'm not just talking about political pushback. I'm talking about people, I think activists, news, were Muslims protesting in the street. Like, okay, we're talking about one million people arrested for for the crime of being muslim in china yeah right? that, that's But, that's probably because like pakistan saudi arabia these countries are like highly dependent on china and they're just throwing some few muslims under the track to protect themselves yeah but it's not just the government systems it's also the people i mean i to be fair there are some muslims that are trying to bring attention to this but but even the people most muslims are not reacting to what china is doing compared to what they would have done if it was one of the traditional enemies they recognize like if israel was doing a fraction of what china is doing this this would be they would be shouting it out in uh, shouting this in every mosque right now right like they're talking about this but china gets away with it and not not it's not just the government that is excusing what china is do doing not just governments but also the people Um, a lot of people, a lot of people in Pakistan, for example, love China because of all the trade and all the money that it's bringing in. It's just bizarre. And you know, the thing is that uh, United States, if, I think, like China and India are eventually going to replace United States as the world superpower, right? And both China and India are way more anti-Muslim than United States ever will yeah. ever be. And it's very interesting because Muslims see United States as the great devil, but once China and India become the superpowers, I think Muslims are going to miss United States as a superpower. <laughs> They're going to be like, we were very, we were treated yeah. very well as, as with as United States compared to, in, you know, like I mean, it's it's interesting to me that Muslims consider the United States to be anti-Islam anyway, given how, you know, how much. How much, how close of a relationship United States has with like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, um, or like so many other Islamic yeah. countries? It's just, but but when it comes to China and oh my god, it's so I don't know. I mean, I I I I can say something like uh, I think I know why India gets away with it. I don't know about China, but India is probably like. Uh, the it's not exactly directly from the government. It's like a mob rule. The mob is uh, lynching on Muslims and all. And while the government people are like uh, criminalizing triple talaq, going to Kashmir region and feeding some Muslims, and they are mm. publishing that on media while they are leaving out these lynching cases. So that's probably a reason why India might be getting out. Oh, well, I mean, okay. So when it comes to India, though, the Muslims in Pakistan and the Muslims in India, they do call that out. They do, but the Mus the other Muslims around the world, what India is doing is not really that big on their list, right? Oh, like, even even not every Muslim in India calls that out. Many support. Actually, many Muslims in India are anti-Pakistan. No, no, no. My point is that yeah. when when India's government starts treating its own Muslims like second uh, you know, class citizens and uh, there are Muslims in India that bring attention to that but Muslims outside of India like Muslims in other countries they don't really care on that much about what India is doing to Muslims they do some of them do but not as much if they, they it has to be Israel or United States for them to start caring If so to probably me, uh, that's uh, probably because of the color like they're white people so if they well, bring something that's white supremacy no because I mean, no like, yeah well because they because the way you define a tribe is by defining your enemy and you your entire you know your entire existence is going to be defined based on who you oppose right um and that's why you know it's not when you go out and speak against the people that are oppressing muslims it's not really about protecting the muslims it's about signaling that you belong to this tribe right and because that's the entire point is to signal your in, uh, signal that you belong to this tribe then, then if somebody else is oppressing muslims well that's really not fitting into our narrative so it's not as important for you to cover that so that's my that's how i see it i might be wrong 
Anyways, let me see what the kind okay, of thing here. Okay, t top comments is saying, but okay, so top comment, Michael is saying, keep up the good works. Fucking hell, man. Look at this. Our top comment on Atheist Republic is approving of China sterilizing women. She just is fucking embarrassing. God damn it, Michael. Tracy is saying, but it's their culture. Who are we as white privileged Westerners to pass judgment onto that which we fail to understand? I hope this is a joke. I hope this is a dark, dark, dark joke. Um, I think it's satire, yeah. Uh, Patricia is saying, spoiler alert. Um, religious beliefs are in genetic. They are learned. Every person is born an atheist. My God, another Robert, Robert is also saying good job. See, we have atheists on Atheist Republic approving of. This is, this is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. But it's good, but it's good thing that we show people that this exists because a lot of atheists have this, this um, are under this illusion that all oh, atheists are better. And we don't shy away from showing that we know our claim is that atheism doesn't make you less moral, but we don't we, we don't go as far as saying atheism makes you more moral. We just want to say what our claim is that we're just as moral as other people, right? And we don't claim superiority because of atheism. We just don't want to be treated as, as inferior. So when the, we have a lot of people in our community, atheists, that think like, oh, we must be better because we're atheists, and we want to highlight the co shitty comments, like toxic comments, like this to to show that like look at look we have we have some really messed up people in our own community not just atheists within the, our own atheist republic community so we do yeah, want to I highlight mean, it. it's yeah. like uh, we don't have any means we take responsibilities for shitty stuff we don't yeah. like blame some uh, our religion i mean that's yeah. not how it works for us and we that's don't the difference and we don't try to hide it we highlight it yeah. see it as a, we try to see it as a problem and try to see what we can do and we don't ban it this is exactly why we don't ban these people because we need them to show that this is a problem um okay let's go to the next news let me bring the news summary okay next news young woman flee morocco after being threatened with beheading for wearing shorts yeah not a that escalated so just for wearing beheading for wearing shirts okay three teenage girls have fled morocco after a local uh, school teacher said he wanted their heads cut off for wearing shorts the girls were volunteering to help build a road in the village of adar when the teacher who has since been arrested made the vile comments he posted on social media that the young women were not respecting the muslim faith and said he wanted to teach them a lesson before threatening them with beheading wow so you had these three women coming to help they were volunteering they were trying to build a road in your village and instead of looking at the help that you were doing for your village you just noticed that they were wearing shorts and instead of thanking them, you threaten them with beheading. Holy fuck. And they ran away like, you know, fuck this village. They were like, fuck your road. We're out of yeah. here. It's <laughs> not fuck the village because it, it was just that one man. Everyone else is condemning that one man. Right. Everyone else is saying like, what a shitty person he was. And right. They were really helpful. I mean, more people, uh, I feel bad for Morocco because Morocco is actually pretty, you know, laid back compared to other Muslim Islamic countries. It's relatively safe and people are chill over there. They're, it's more secular relative to other Islamic countries, right? And they yeah, don't... Even, even, even the girls said that they really enjoyed their stay in Morocco. It was just that one man. Right. And he got arrested, right, for the threats. So, yeah, he got arrested. But this is going to, I mean, Morocco really needs tourism right now. And this is going to, this is really going to hurt them, right? Because, um, but yeah, I mean, good thing he was arrested. What the fuck? Like, imagine like looking at three women trying to help your village and 
the first thing you're like oh I, and imagine how pathetic and weak your religion has to be that is being threatened by women wearing shirts but what was his exact wording he said that not respecting the muslim faith i mean you're the, the way you're embarrassing the muslim faith is actually way worse with what you do to the reputation of the muslim faith is way worse than what these girl, uh, girls did with their shirts anyways good thing that he was arrested again morocco does get a you know this is an, they they also had some just recently this year i think it was where some tourists were beheaded and these are very rare for morocco but they're, they're capturing a lot of negative news at a time where morocco really does need some more tourism um let me see what the top comment is pan is saying when you go abroad oh no oh my god okay look at what this what our atheist community thinks okay okay this is what the atheist republic top comment is but to be fair it's a top comment because it got a lot of angry and laughing reactions not because it got likes or hearts so pan is saying when you go abroad show respect for the culture and traditions symbols no Fuck your cultures and fuck your rules if you have shitty rules. Right, right, that, that, that's one thing. And second of all, this wasn't even there. This is Morocco, okay? This was not, it's an Islamic country. It's not Saudi Arabia. You don't, there's nothing that you needed to respect. These women were not, you know, this, everyone, like, like Shopam said, everybody else other than this, this idiot teacher was okay with what they were doing so pan you have no fucking idea what you're talking about when you say that also way to blame you know switch the blame on the, on the people on the wrong side what do you think shopam how what do you say to pan uh i mean fuck cultures if it's shitty culture yeah I mean, fuck culture. as long as you are not uh, actively disturbing people uh you're fine you're not exactly disrespecting anyone if you're not actually happening with what they do on their daily basis. Right. And it was not like it's not like it's Morocco's culture. I mean, they're yeah. pretty laid back, like you said. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, uh, also, every, everyone is okay with them. Everyone is thanking them for their help, and everyone is saying shit about this man who well, threatened them with beheading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Pan, you have no idea what you're talking about. Pan, yeah. <laughs> you need more hard reacts on your comment. <laughs> Um, re, uh, Andrew saying I went to Morocco and they were more than hospitable yeah Morocco is actually pretty nice for tourism it looks it looks beautiful um, all right should we go to the next news let's go to the next news uh, pastor recited Bible verses while allegedly sexually assaulting underage girl oh shit. okay uh, Caesar Guri, what's his name? Guriro, Guerrero. How do you say? Caesar, Ger Caesar Guerrero. Guerrero of a church of church in Sharnville was arrested after. Where was this? This is Ohio, right? Yeah. Um, he was arrested after he was accused of assaulting a 17-year-old girl who came to him to talk about her previous abuse. Oh my God! The girl was previously abused. So he goes to this pastor for help, and then he gets abused by the pastor. Like it. Uh, so he ultimately admitted that he wait. So if he admitted, why why does the title say allegedly? That's weird. Okay, so he ultimately admitted that he used his position as a divine figure to for to further under traumatize the child. Um, an affidavit uh, stated Guriro is prophet of God and as the pastor of his church used that information to influence juvenile in, uh, a juvenile into believing she needed to be cleansed from being molested as a child. Guriro, Guriro uh, then arranged to meet the juvenile alone in his office on July 30th according to court documents Gloria used the bible used bible scripture and prayers to cleanse the juvenile while he assaulted her 
uh, court document stated. This goes back to what we were saying before, like these are trust, the trust that p these pastors or these religious leaders, the, the community gives them, just creates perfect environment for them to uh, ab groom and abuse children. But do you know how, yeah, go on, Shopa, you want to say something? Yeah, I uh, first I think it said allegedly because I mean in this case, uh, this particular case he admitted to it, but there are several other allegations of sexual molestations against him. You know, uh, sometimes we wonder like how why would this why are these people such idiots? Like how do they not know that they can't get away with it? But the thing is that they do get away with it. A lot of most of them do get away with it. These are just the rare ones that you see that they didn't get get away with it like the, the environment that they have created and the trust that people have for them including their own victims if you see this see the the way they have set it up it's hard a lot of times it's hard for them to imagine that they're not gonna get get away with it right and again you only hear about the ones that people didn't get away with like but also, I, I'm really feeling sorry for that poor girl because she was sexually molested once and then she yeah. came to him for and he sexually molested her again. Right. I mean, this, this kind of cases lead to suicides and everything. Yeah. That's very sad. It's really fucked up. And again, this is why when people say like, well, at least religion gives you community and support. The thing is that these, these people, even the ones that are not child molesters like this guy, uh, or rapists, they have no qualifications to to deal with victims or people that are going through trauma. If religion was not there, if religion doesn't have a monopoly over community or these kind uh, these kind of services, it would have been replaced with people that were more qualified to address your needs, right? So whatever, like yeah, there are some needs that we have, like community, like support, like sense of belonging, sense of significance. That religion pretends to uh, respond to and people say well we have these needs so we have religion but no but if you take away religion they will be re they will be replaced with better things it's not like it's not going to get met religion has an unfair advantage a monopoly over in the market when it comes to addressing and then this is what happens unqualified people anyways i'm gonna stop um, you want to add anything to that? Let me see what Tom comment is. Um, wait, why was he reciting it while he was abusing her? That's really freaky. Like, it? I think, I think that was a psychological tactic. Like he wanted the girl to think that she was being cleansed by using the Bible passages while he was having his way with her. That is fucked up. In so I mean, many that's, yeah. I, I've heard of this sexual, uh, I mean, psychological tactics, but this right. is. This is really fucked. Right. All right, let's go to the next news. Okay, where is the summary for this one? Okay. Sohail Arabi, an Iranian jail blogger, must be released immediately. So, uh, so that's the title. Sohail is a jailed rights activist, an activist and a blogger who has been in prison in Iran since 2013. He has been physically and psychologically tortured solely for practicing his freedom of speech through his blog and social media. There was a campaign to free political prisoners in Iran, uh, inviting everyone to join us on August 17th, um, 2019, to demand the release of Sohel and all political prison, uh, prisoners in Iran. The organization of the Atheist Republic Hey, that us, we're in the news, uh, has organized an international day of protest on August 17, 2019 in different countries across the world, inviting everyone to join them to demand Sohail's release. So I don't know when you're listening to this, but for us, August 17th was yesterday. So we just did this yesterday. We, I was, I'm in London, so we did ours in, we protested in front of Iran's embassy in London. This happened in many other cities. We recorded the videos and we took the pictures and this is not just, we're not just going to stop at doing the protest. So the plan is, and we're going to keep doing this and we're going to keep learning how to keep making these protests bigger and bigger, right? 
So the plan is to identify political prisoners, blasphemers, and atheists that have been in prison for for just like for example, Sohail Arabi just made a post on Facebook insulting Prophet Muhammad, and he did it with an anonymous account, but somebody somehow figured it out that it was him, and he's been in jail ever since, right? So how many years has it been? Um, it's been seven years, around seven years. He's in jail. He's been on and off death row simply for a fucking Facebook post, right? For a Facebook post, and he's been tortured in jail. He's been beaten. He's been separated from his daughter. He's been his daughter for seven years and his mother and also his wife. His mother has been now captured and arrested because he's been, his mother has been trying for seven years to get him out of prison for a Facebook post insulting Prophet Muhammad, right? But the goal is not to just have these protests and then be like, bring some attention to it and then just move on, right? We're, again, this is a learning process from us. We're going to have these protests. Uh, and we're going to bring as much attention as we can to it. And what we, the next step is to learn, the first step is to learn how to do these prot protests and highlight the cases that we want. The next step is that Atheist Republic is going to try to learn how to reach out to journalists, smaller journalists that are that might respond to you easier, and to get them to come cover these stories, even if it's in smaller news outlets, smaller newspapers, it's fine because it's harder to get into bigger newspapers but the, if we get to smaller newspapers that's already good uh, and then we could keep working on the first two steps getting bigger crowds and then getting to bigger news publications right and then the third step is to reach out to politicians again smaller time politicians first and then maybe keep growing and eventually to bigger co politicians so step one have a huge rally Right now they're small. Hopefully we could make them bigger. Step two, get a news coverage. Step three, use the fact that it got news coverage to go to politicians and try to get them to make to to put pressure on the country that we're targeting for their human rights violations. And again, these things a lot of people think like oh petitions or protests, they things don't work. These countries are going to do whatever. No, it's not true. We have shown time and time again that we have stopped for human rights violations because of this. There are people that are alive today because people came into the streets. And it's not just about the tar the person that we're highlighting, okay? It's not just about the person we're highlighting because if you make if you if you put if you embarrass a country, if you if you if you introduce a cost for governments to go after atheists, for governments to go after blasphemers, they put that cost into co their calculation the next time they want to decide whether or not to torture somebody, whether or not to kill somebody, whether or not to imprison somebody, simply because they said something that was blasphemous to them, simply because they insulted your, their religion. Again, how pathetic it is for you to put somebody in jail and to torture them because of your weak religion that cannot even handle a simple insult. If that's an insult to Islam, then you imprisoning these people is, all, is, is a bigger insult because it shows how weak and pathetic your religion is. So you might as well put yourself in prison. Anyways, let me see what the... Shripam, did you want to add anything? Well, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, even while being in prison, he protested for the other prisoners who were captured for insulting Islam or something like that. Right. Also, the, also there has been like a small protest and even from countries where people cannot outright protest on the streets, they have been like, uh, you, uh, you're tweeting hashtag free so help or supporting the protest. Yeah. And even I, I made a video about free so help. So uh, there has been protests. Yeah, Chris in the live chat is saying the campaign went very well all around the world. Everyone gave their all. I mean, I think this was v much better than I thought for our first attempt at the protest. It was really, I was very impressed. I mean, good job to our team. We had a big uh, volunteer team. Thank you so much to Ali and Alice and Mike and so many other people that helped with this campaign. I'm very impressed with our team and the way we um, we did our first attempt at, at doing this. And I'm ho I hope we keep growing and keep doing this. And, and I also want to thank, like, we had in, in London, we had um, uh, Alex from Cosmic Skeptic show up. We had Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. Uh, and also Rash, um, Stephen from Rational, uh, Rationality Rules, who recorded uh, everything. And he's going to be releasing our protest in London on his channel 
which is going to bring a lot more attention to Suhail's case because his channel is pretty big. So, again, people that say these things don't work, you, you know, you're wrong. Um, and yeah, thank you for anybody that did, that did come out, that did, do you know, raise awareness about this yesterday. We really appreciate it. We did, we did need all the attention we could get for this to um, and, and you guys helped. Um, I'm very grateful. Anyways, uh, let's go to the next news. Okay. Elizabeth Smart's dad comes out as gay blast, blast Mormon church. Okay, so this is a big deal apparently because these people are famous, but I did not know, who, I don't know who these people are, but let's look at the summary. Ed Smart, who's Elizabeth Smart's father, has come out as gay. The father of Elizabeth Smart stated, he is finally acknowledging a part of me that I have struggled with most of my life and never wanted to accept. Uh, in a letter sent to loved ones Thursday, uh, Thursday on Facebook, Messenger reports NBC News. Again, NBC News. These people must be a big deal if, if this is getting covered on the news. Ed's daughter, Elizabeth, made international headlines. Oh, okay, yeah. So now we're hearing why these people are famous. So Ed's daughter, Elizabeth, made international headlines when she was kidnapped from her Salt Lake City home at age 14. For people that don't know, Salt Lake City is like Mormon capital of the world. Uh, she endured captivity for nine months and after her rescue by police cited for to her Mormon To her Mormon faith as a factor in her survival, but isn't her Mormon faith also a factor in her kidnapping? Wasn't that I don't know why she was kidnapped. Do you know Do you know her story? I don't know her story Anyways, let me continue uh, tell me, tell me at the end if that was why she was kidnapped. I mean, uh, no, the kidnapper had, I th uh, from what I read, uh, quite a few religious backgrounds. I mean, yeah. he had some kind of Christian backgrounds. At a point, he even had a Hindu background and other Whoa. stuff on oh. that. Okay, well, that's okay. That's weird. Uh, as advocacy kept her uh, plight in the media during the her kidnapping. There, there have been mixed reports about whether Ed would stay in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is the Mormon Church, basically. Uh, as an openly gay man, the Church is not a place where I find some solace any longer, he wrote in the letter. So basically, the reason why this is getting attention is because these people made a huge deal out of their Mormon faith during their kidnapping, right? And they're like, oh, Mormon faith is so great, this is why we survived. And now when they find out the father is gay, he's coming like, you know, screw the Mormon church, I'm out, these people are intolerant. Which is, which is kind of like, not, like people might say, I mean, it's fair to say like, good, good job, good for you to, for calling out the Mormon church out for its anti-gay bigotry and intolerance and calling it, as you see, you know, calling bullshit on what they're doing. But... I also wonder, like, wait, so if you weren't gay, like, you ha it had to personally affect you for you to realize that this is wrong? Like, would you have noticed, like, would you have noticed that this is an intolerant ch church of gay people if you were, if you were not gay? Do you know what I'm saying, Shepam? It's, it just seems like people just decide that something is bad if it affects them personally. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Like, uh, he, uh, what he said, uh, although he, what he said is like, uh, he himself has been a victim of that shunning from the Mormon church, of the shunning and mocking and insulting of them. But he has stayed quiet for all these years and now finally decided to come out. Yeah. I'm not sure. But, uh, I mean, so he has been like suffering for years. If what he said is true, like he has been suffering for years. Right. So, this is this is probably a big deal in the Mormon community because I guess these two people are really high profile people so I guess this is why it's shaking the Muslim in the not Muslim the Mormon world right now this is why for by the way this is their picture I think the mother the daughter and the father right yeah I guess that's them yeah uh, also what he said is like that he will like to stay in the church unless the church wants him out oh what really so, so he's yeah 
Okay, that's horse shit then. I mean, I, I don't understand. He knows that his church is homophobic. He knows yeah. everything, every stance they have wants against. To be there. And he still wants to be a part of the church unless the church actively wants him out. Yes. Which I think they will want yeah, him, will, out, but, will him out, but but yeah. uh, even he said that that's like why 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 are you endorsing such a hateful ideology? Evelyn is saying not sure why this is newsworthy. She is she is the story. Well, we already explained why she do. I mean, it's making it's make we're just covering the news that is that people are reacting to the most, and this is one of them. And it's also based on requests of people what to cover and uh, Jenny saying this family has some serious courage kudos to them well no not really uh, given that he's not quitting the church anyways let's go to the last news um, the last news thing as Montreal celebrates pride LGBTQ groups see rise in hateful messages online Mont uh, as okay so this is the so Montreal's pride is just happening in, okay so Montreal kicks off its 2019 pride festival with music performance art and much celebration uh, the organization that built, built it all, all Verti Mont okay I can I'm not even gonna try has expressed concern about the rising tide of online hate and Jean Sebastian Bro Bord I don't know Bordrud I don't know the group Bordru I, I think it's doesn't, French so that, yeah it doesn't matter the the group's vice president told Radio Canada uh, that for, okay has received whatever their name is has received more than one thousand homophobic and hate filled comments wait so. Is it, how do we know if it's, it's less than before or more than before? Like, do we know it's more than before? Is it actually increasing? And if it's increasing, why is it increasing? This is Montreal. This is one of the most secular cities in the planet. What? I think I think he said that it has been on a uh, rise recently because of like uh, some quality. I mean, the rise of the old right in many countries like Brazil, Hungary, USA, India. Like they have been like. Uh, giving out like anti-LGBT stance and those policies, those politicians when they're saying this stuff, it is also, I mean, making the youth go against them and uh, giving out hate speeches against the LGBTQ. Right. I yeah, think but it's on a rise. Is, is, okay, but is it, do we know it's because of their alt-right? Is, uh, or is it? I mean, he, he said that. He, he al said uh, that? He, mm. Yeah, in this, in this article it is said, it is also said that he also cites other world leaders whose anti-LGBTQ remarks and policies have been in the news this summer, including Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro or Hungary's Viktor Orban. I don't know. This guy does, I don't know if he, I think he's just guessing why, right? Like, I, it doesn't, like, do, are we really saying that? What's happening in Brazil is creating more online homophobic threats in Canada? No, what I think is like, I mean, there are always people who have like this uh, homophobia, underlying homophobia in them. I mean, most societies, many societies where, uh, which are really religious and stuff, like they are patriarchal and they have like this homophobic uh, ideologies inside them, even they have if they are not expressive about it but when they see like famous people like some politician or someone else speaking against the lgbtq people and so they themselves think like okay so i'm right my ideology is not exactly wrong so i should speak against it as well and they come out as anti-lgbtq people well i mean you could be and i mean you could be anti you could think LG, you know, being gay is wrong, and you're wrong. I mean, that that's something we disagree with, but that's not necessarily homophobic, is it? Like, if somebody think like, no. I think being gay is a sin, we could. That is that homophobic? I could be like, well, you're wrong. It's not a sin. There's no such thing as a sin. Or if you say, well, I think it's immoral, and like, well, no, this is the. We could tell them that this is the reason why it's not immoral. But I think when I have somebody says homophobic, I think like more than just that. I think homophobic is somebody that actually hates gay people. 
Right? I think it's different. Yeah, that, what what you were saying is like they're intolerant of gay people to right. for them to be homophobic. But I mean, uh, even if they're like uh, uh, they say that being homosexual or gay is wrong, then I mean, in a broader sense, that can be considered as homophobic, actually. No, because I mean, if somebody I thinks mean, a- I mean, I'm an atheist. If somebody thinks atheism yeah. is wrong. I don't think they're they're hateful towards atheists, but if they say like, "Oh fuck atheists, they all deserve to die," they're like, "Okay, you're hateful of atheists." But if somebody says that, you know, I love atheists, I think atheism is wrong, and I'm worried I'm worried they're gonna go to hell, I don't think that's hateful. I think they're just wrong, right? Okay, uh, yeah, that is means it's not homophobia. I mean, it's not always about hate like some people are genuinely afraid of gays from what i've seen like yeah yeah they, that's you know, homophobia. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's homophobia i mean they're not exactly like oh no you should die you should it's wrong you should die uh, it's yeah. the abomination and everything they're not like that they're just saying oh, oh no he's gay uh, let's stay away from him All right, wait, okay yeah. I, I don't want to expose my kid to him they're not outright hateful yeah but they're like not exactly, I mean, you, uh-huh. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying both of those situations are, uh, I consider homophobic. But I think if somebody just says like, hey, I don't, I think, I don't think this is right. I don't think they're, that's homophobic. I think they're just wrong. By the way, the top comment is actually uh, interesting. <laughs> Charles, this is our top comment, by the way. Uh, saying, love how people think they can be proud of accomplishments that are in there. So actually, th- this is, a, are, um, are in theirs. I think the grammar is wrong here. It should be theirs. But so Charles is saying that, um, look at this story, and instead of pointing out the increase in hateful messages online, he's focusing on the pride part of the story, right? He's saying, like, he's, he's pointing out that he's, he, apparently he's anti-pride because people are claiming you know proud of things like being gay is not an accomplishment so this is what he's deciding to target what do you think what do you say to charles i have responses uh well i have many responses i mean i know many people who think like this like okay you are gay so what you don't have anything to be proud i mean okay they have lived a life full of like uh, shun- uh, they have been shunned by their closest family members and friends i mean many of them have been and it is a proud thing to be out in my yeah if you ask me so i mean they have they have uh, absolutely they have the right to be proud of who they are and uh, if they are out of the closet so that, even if they're not uh, they yeah. have they can be proud i mean because why not they're living i mean they are living a very hard life it's uh, compared to straight people gay people trans people they live very difficult lives right and I, I can i can like well, say this first hand because I live a very difficult life because of that. All right. So this is this is the way I think about this. I think like you said being out, right? So I think you you, you shouldn't be proud of anything that you had no cho- decision, in, right? But you shouldn't also be ashamed of anything that you should have no decision, in, right? So the pride for me in gay pride is not about being gay. It's about being gay and being open about it because so the fact is that you decided to come out as gay that is not something that was biological right coming out as being brave enough especially in places where people are very anti-gay or be doing gay rights activism or just not, not even if in places where it's now normalized just making sure that you are open about being gay just to keep it normalized those decisions, those are not biology. Those are decisions that you're making to normalize being gay. So I think the way I want, the way I justify gay pride is the is the pride is not about being gay because you had you know again I agree that you can't be proud of something you had no say in. The proud the proud of the the pride in gay pride is about. I have decided to make sure that being gay is normalized by being open about being gay like that, right? And when it comes to just being gay, I think this, what we should, and nothing else, like I think the focus should be on not being ashamed. You know, there's nothing wrong with you for being, instead of being proud of it, you shouldn't, I, I think, and that it should be, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. 
but I think it's okay to say you can be proud of announcing and op that you're gay and not being open about being gay and doing gay rights activism because that's actually something that you're doing. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, this practice, they're not just about they themselves bring proud of themselves. I mean, it also helps in normalizing everything to the society. Right. And not just their society, even all around the world, when people see what they're up to, what they're doing, everything, it, right. it slowly gets normalized. It doesn't get normalized overnight, but it the people start to think about it. Like, they're just normal people. There's nothing wrong with them and everything. Right. That's what you should be proud of. Exactly. Like you are changing the society into a better society. That's something to be proud of. Yeah, I agree. Okay, that was our last news. Thank you, everybody, in the live chat. Um, Doorknob Head, Another Godless Atheist, Beige. Um, Al the reason Ali didn't come... Ali is okay, by the way. Um, the reason why she couldn't come today is because I had to... I'm, I'm about to get on a flight. I'm going to Dusseldorf now. I'm in London going to Dusseldorf. Um, and I could, I need to do, I couldn't do it on regular timing. I had to do it today at this time. And it's really late at night where Ali is right now. So that's why she couldn't make it today. But hopefully next time she'll be with us. Um, Mike, everybody else. Thank you guys. Thank you for your comments. Love you all. Shopham. Thank you for doing this and see you guys again next week. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Arwin. Bye. Bye.